Okay, look, Marvel characters hook up a whole lot. They are getting together left and right. And considering that the last video that I did about this hit 1.5 million views, I think you guys might want to hear some more. So let's pander a little bit. Here are even more Marvel characters that you might be surprised got together. But before we get too far into things, I want to give a quick shout out to a very appropriate sponsor for this video, Manscaped. Honestly, if you're planning on getting intimate in any way, shape, or form, you should probably be doing some maintenance. And also, I'm looking forward to the fact that my beard trimmer is going to finally be just a beard trimmer. The Lawnmower 2.0 Body Hair Trimmer is actually 100% waterproof, which is really neat. It's cordless and USB chargeable. The Crop Preserver, which is a ball deodorant. You don't want to get a ball soup going on. This is very important. I think probably my girlfriend would sum this up better. It's good stuff. So go ahead and try it to yourself at manscaped.com. Make sure to use the code COMICD20 for 20% off, free shipping, and a free gift. Thank you guys for making my junk a lot more fresh. Let's start things off with the grandest of pairings. As many of you know, Odin is the father of Thor and the all-father of Asgard. While he might not get around as much as fellow Skyfather Zeus, Odin is still known to go wild. But would you believe that he used to date the Phoenix Force itself? Yeah, that big cosmic firebird that gave Jean Grey immense power? That one. So, newer Avengers books have introduced comic fans to the prehistoric Avengers. Basically, if it's a mantle that's been passed on for centuries, one of their ancestors is probably on the team. Odin was arguably the leader of the team, wielding Mjolnir way before Thor, and his main squeeze was the Phoenix. If you don't believe me that they did in fact seal the deal, then here's a scene of him reminiscing about making love to her. When the Phoenix was first introduced to Marvel Comics, it was sort of impersonating Jean Grey. Yeah, the whole Dark Phoenix saga, that wasn't actually Jean, in fact she was at the bottom of a lake. So that means that Cyclops was actually dating the Phoenix Force itself. So there you go. That's six degrees of separation made very easy between Scott Summers and freaking Odin. On the subject of Asgardians, it's pretty well known that Thor and Lady Sif used to be an item, but apparently she has a thing for worthy hammer wielders, because Sif also used to date the Thors himself, Beta Ray Bill. Having recently broken up with Thor, Sif's infatuation with Bill was almost instantaneous, noting how Bill was just as brave and strong as Thor, and she wanted to win his favor. This is something that Bill's talking ship even took notice of pretty quickly. After receiving a hammer of his own, Stormbreaker, Beta Ray Bill left Asgard to protect his people, with Sif opting to come along. Regardless of which form he took, she was still totally into Bill. Unfortunately, the two eventually drifted apart, with Beta Ray Bill getting together with T. Asha Ra, a mate that was directly created for Bill by Galactus. While this has led to some very awkward moments between the two warriors, it's clear that Lady Sif does still cling on to what they used to have, and who knows, maybe they could actually get together again someday. Um... Okay, okay, so this one's complicated. Uh, long story short, Scarlet Witch once went a little crazy and wiped most of the world's mutants from existence. After a bunch of comic book crap, she got amnesia and moved to Doctor Doom's kingdom of Latveria. While there, Wanda petitioned Doom regarding the struggles of her people, the Romani. Considering that she was once one of his enemies, Doom knew exactly who Wanda was and started working with her in order to keep tabs. Eventually though, he did fall in love with Wanda and they even got engaged. All the while though, Doom kept Wanda's identity as the Scarlet Witch a secret from her, hoping to not reactivate her powers. However, Wanda's reincarnated children that she had with the Vision came to rescue her, I told you it was complicated, and her memories were restored. She was still okay with marrying Doom though, that is, until he gained the power of a god and tried to remake the universe in his image. For the full picture, just go ahead and read Avengers The Children's Crusade because that's where all of this happens. Flash Thompson is a character that has been all over the place, most famously from his role as Agent Venom. But back in the day, he was simply a bully to Peter Parker, all the while being a massive Spider-Man fanboy, blissfully unaware that they were in fact one and the same. Peter and Flash ended up becoming good friends later on as adults, which makes one of Thompson's girlfriends an odd choice. Black Cat is Peter's on and off again girlfriend that constantly flops between being an anti-hero and a villain. Well, when Peter broke up with Felicia and ended up marrying Mary Jane instead, she got pissed and started dating Flash Thompson in order to get back at him. Although this petty act of revenge was Black Cat's original motivation, she actually ended up falling pretty hard for Flash, going so far as to even proposing to him, but Flash ended up rejecting it. It turns out that Flash knew that Felicia was Black Cat all along, and he specifically dated her because she used to date Spider-Man, and he wanted to be that close to his idol. 
this ultimately broke them up, but it later turns out that Felicia's relationship with Flash didn't mean a lot to her. I'm going to have to call bullshit on that one though. I mean, you don't just get so invested in a relationship that you propose, write it off, and then claim that you dated them for 2.4 seconds. Sadly though, it looks like we're never going to see this played with down the line, considering that one, Flash is currently dead, and two, Spidey comics are intent on focusing on the Black Cat Spider-Man dynamic. Oh well. I'm really surprised that I didn't hear more people talk about this, considering that Jessica Jones Season 1 and Ant-Man both came out in 2015. But yeah, Jessica and Scott were an item for a pretty decent while. In Jessica's debut series, Alias, her good friend Carol Danvers gave them each other's number. Scott ended up calling Jessica right at the end of a really stressful case, and it's situations like these that help their relationship grow. Like on their first date, supervillains were attacking the area. Jessica didn't do that stuff anymore, and Scott didn't have his gear on him, so they let other heroes take care of things. Shortly after, Maddie Franklin, one of the several people to take up the mantle of Spider-Woman, broke into Jessica's apartment and left via the window. This naturally freaked Jones out, so she called up Scott and slept over at his place. I think that it's these freaky circumstances that really brought Jessica and Scott together. They seem to survive a lot together, including when Jessica's abuser, Purple Man, got free and actually took control of Scott. What finally broke them up was when Jones discovered that she was in fact three months pregnant with Luke Cage's baby, so they split. Thankfully though, Luke and Jessica got married, had their kid, and are still happy to this day. Scott, on the other hand, is still single and uh, his life has been a bit of a roller coaster. Speaking of the Jessica Jones Netflix show, one of its characters, Patsy Walker, is a fascinating character in the comics. She has such a crazy publication history that I need to make an entire video just in order to explain it. Anyway, she goes by the superhero code name Hellcat and was once married to a dude named Damon Hellstrom, the literal son of Satan. The two met and worked together as members of the Defenders, and their connection was pretty immediate. That being said, the two barely interacted, especially in a romantic sense, before Damon revealed his love for Patsy during a fight with his dad, during which Hellcat was merged with a demon, because comics. In exchange for purging Hellcat of the demonic influence, Damon had to join his father in Hell, but thankfully he got out and was able to pursue his romance with Patsy proper upon his return. Once again, the two of them barely interacted before Damon lost the source of his demonic power, the Dark Soul, and became fully mortal. Celebrating Damon's newfound mortality, he and Patsy decided to get married and actually left the Defenders. Now, rushing into a marriage is usually not a good idea, but that's not why this marriage didn't work out. You see, Damon's power started to fade without his Dark Soul. No big deal. But over time, the loss of Damon's demonic energy was literally killing him. Patsy, being the good wife that she was, got her hands on an unholy tome, summoned Satan, and got Damon's Dark Soul back. But looking upon his true face caused Patsy to go insane and later kill herself. According to the Till Death Do Us Part clause, the two were divorced. And even after coming back to life, the two of them have had a complicated relationship, and it's clear that they are never, ever, ever getting back together. While we're already on the subject of Hell, I should probably mention that it's only one of several demonic dimensions in the multiverse of Marvel Comics. One of them, the Dark Dimension, is usually under the control of the villainous Dormammu, but today, I want to talk about his twin sister, a relatively obscure character named Umar. While the siblings are usually butting heads over who gets to control the Dark Dimension, they teamed up in the 2005 Defenders miniseries, hoping to take control of all reality. During a fight with the Defenders, Dormammu had turned the Hulk into a crystal statue, but Umar wanted to use the Jolly Green Giant for her own personal uses. After apparently six minutes of Hulk smashing, the big dude was out like a light. But right when Umar tried casting a spell to fully bring the Hulk under her command, that one night stand left him so satisfied that the Hulk reverted back to Bruce Banner and he wasn't able to turn back. Umar was disgusted by Banner, but still opted to keep him on a leash, complete with spiky collar. I mean, I think this image speaks for itself, but I'm still glad that we got this exchange from Bruce and Namor when they eventually met up. So, there you go. Seven more connections on the soap opera-like web that is Marvel Comics relationships. And, uh, yeah, I actually have charted it out. So which of these hookups was your favorite? And also, are there any other Marvel Comics relationships that are worth talking about in the future that I didn't mention? Go ahead and leave those down in the comments below. But if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing or even watching another one? And yeah, this is part two, so if you want to see even more surprising Marvel Comics hookups, then just go watch the previous episode. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.